is surgery the only option for herniated discs? Many times when I meet with patients regarding their spinal condition, they're very often they're told they have herniated discs, regardless of whatever condition they could have, being scoliosis or kyphosis or misalignments in the spine, they do MRIs and they normally find they have a herniated disc. And very often they're told that the only option that they have is surgery. So to understand if that really is your only option, we first have to understand is what are spinal discs. Discs sit between adjacent vertebras, meaning you have one bone above and one bone below, and you have a disc in between. This consists of a very tough, durable outer layer, and it also has a soft gel-like interior. And the disc primarily is to facilitate flexibility of the spine. The spine has this very unique ability to protect what's inside the spine, which is your spinal cord, your nerves, and all the things that are exiting out the spine to actually allow your body to function properly. The spine has to protect that, but also the spine has to allow for movement. It has to be able to bend and rotate and move so you can move your torso accordingly to the way you want to function throughout your day. So the spine, the spine in order to prevent, provide this flexibility, it can't just be one solid bone. It has to have discs in between that allow these bones to move, but also attach in a way that it provides for protection and structure to your torso and your upper body, but it also provides flexibility and cushioning between each and adjacent vertebra to prevent friction and degeneration. And that's the primary goal of spinal discs, is to prevent um, cushioning, um, to help improve, uh, prevent friction, help improve the spine from degenerating as a shock absorber in a way to help keep the spine, the ability for it to move properly and also uh, protect the spinal cord and nerve system properly. So what is a herniated disc? A herniated disc is when the soft inner gel pushes through the tough, durable outer layer and it pushes through. And this, this soft gel can actually protrude into the central portion of the spine. This normally happens when there's abnormal weight bearing on the vertebra, uh, on the disc, excuse me, by the vertebra above or below. In addition, that the disc also has gone through some hydration changes, meaning the hydration of the disc has decreased its level or its ability to maintain its normal position. And therefore, these vertebra can cause the disc to bulge or herniate um, it out of their normal position. And this unfortunately can start to affect the spinal nerves and the canal, which can lead to nerve compression, irritation, and impingement. Because of this compression to the nerve system, herniated discs sometimes can create a tremendous amount of pain, typically radiating pain or, or, or numb-like pain away from the spine into your extremities or to different parts of the body. Now, un unfortunately, it doesn't always cause pain. Then you can actually have a disc herniation or a disc bulge uh, irritating some nerve tissue, but it's not affecting fibers that actually sense pain, and therefore you feel no pain. And however, you could have a weakness in this area, meaning it's waiting and making you prone to future injuries, which can cause the herniation to worsen. When we talk about what types of surgeries can possibly deal with herniated discs and try to deal with the symptoms or what you're feeling, most of these things are involved in removing parts of the spine from your body to help decompress the nerve tissue. Because what's creating the symptoms or what you're experiencing isn't necessarily the disc, it's what the disc is pressing on. So normally what you're doing is you're trying to remove or cut parts of the disc out or, or the bone out to try to create more room or more space. So therefore the nerve system is not being compressed. The most common one is something called a discectomy. A discectomy is when they remove a part of the disc or all the disc actually, and to try to remove the pressure off whatever nerve it's affecting or whatever spinal cord area it's affecting. Very often, sometimes with a discectomy, they'll do something called a laminectomy as well, and where a laminectomy is where they actually remove the posterior aspects of the vertebral body. They take the entire half of the vertebral body or part of the back half of the vertebral body and remove it, and the lamina is where the spinal nerve comes out to try to provide more room or more, or more space for the nerve itself so it won't be compressed. A cervical corpectomy is when they remove a section of the vertebra adjacent to the disc to decompress the spinal cord and nerves as well. So it's more than just a lamina, they go further out and try to remove a bigger area of the spine. A laminoplasty is where they actually try to create more space within the spinal canal, in the canal itself where the spinal uh, cord sits in to try to decompress the spinal cord and nerves within. And then the last thing they can do is something called a spinal fusion, where they actually fuse one bone 
um, to fuse multiple bones into one bone using spinal screws and plates and pedicle screws. All of these things are designed specifically just to try to remove compression of the nerve tissue because the disc is now pressing onto the spinal cord or nerves. None of them are really addressing what caused the herniation to begin with, and none of them are really addressing the alignment of the spine or the body, which could have been the primary reason why the one of the discs herniated, and none of them are really addressing the hydration level of the discs, which is one of the most prone aspects to create a herniation in the spine. So even though you deal with one area, you're now your rest of your disc can be very susceptible to this problem, because now if you fuse and you make this one area weaker, the rest of your spine has to now compensate for this either diffusion or these laminectomies or these discectomies, and now we can start having multiple problems going on. So a lot of times, when, unfortunately, when patients have spinal fusion or spinal surgery, they're very prone to have a second one because they're not correcting causes. They're just trying to deal with the, seri the situation that you have at this point. So what other types of treatment can exist to help deal with herniated disc? Well, there are non-surgical, less invasive treatments available. And typically, it's a combination of chiropractic care, therapy, and exercises. But the specific type of chiropractic therapy and exercises that you receive are very important to the effectiveness that uh, the, the treatment will provide. Very often, general physical therapy, meaning just general exercises for core strength, core stability, don't affect spinal alignment or hydration of the disc. So therefore, they don't have a great effect in addressing cause. They may provide strength and, strength and stability in the area, which is important, but if you don't deal with the alignment of the spine and you don't deal with the hydration of the disc levels, you're unfortunately not dealing with the cause. So very often, what we do is a very something that we call cyclic therapy or cyclic distraction or traction. This cyclic motion where we're actually creating a, a, a little bit of traction and relaxation, traction and relaxation, can help rehydrate the disc, which is number one. We want to get more fluid into the disc to allow the disc to regain their normal shape. Secondarily is we want to realign the spine back into a better alignment to uh, remove the uneven pressure on the disc itself to allow the disc it's to realign back into a normal position and help promotes the body's ability to reabsorb discs, uh, especially the soft like material, back into the central portion of the disc. So therefore, it's not creating any more pressure. Now, unfortunately, this could take some time. This is not a one day or one night process. So if you're in debilitating severe type of pain and there's nothing that can help you other than having an immediate surgery, that is sometimes the only answer at that point. But if you know you have a herniated disc and you know you have some degenerated discs going on, don't let it become so severe that you're left into a position that you're in debilitating type of pain and you have no other options. The idea is that if you deal with um, herniated disc in a more proactive manner with this, with working on traction and cyclic type of motion, dealing with the physical therapy and exercise to increase core strength and make the spine stronger, and then use chiropractic care to help realign the spine back into normal position, you can prevent your, your disc from becoming severely herniated to where now they're creating this this emergency situation that's been normally occurring for many years, but has been left neglected to now you're at the point where you have no other options. So effective treatment is number one, addressing the cause. Most surgical treatments are dealing, just trying to make space for what's already happened, and they're not really addressing the underlying cause. They are removing the, the, the immediate pressure or trying to remove the immediate pressure with surgical techniques, but the cause of the problem is still there. The alignment problems are still there. The, the lack of hydration there is still there. So therefore, it's still, it's still not addressing the underlying cause. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer integrated treatment programs, all the things I mentioned above, that allow us to get not only the, the to, to correct what's actually causing the, the discs from herniation, but also prevent further herniations from occurring by allowing the spine to be in a better alignment and allow hydration back into the disc levels. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.